be on the heave ho signal as he skated over. I think the Yarmir Yager has gone for the game, Gary. That's one of those five minutes running the man head first into the boards, the check from behind, the five minute major in a game misconduct. It wasn't so much that Yager went for him, but he didn't pull out when he spotted Bassin in a real vulnerable position. Bassin seemed to be bent over about four feet from the boards, and you can't get much more vulnerable than that. All you got to do is sort of bang into the guy's rear end as it's up in the air, and he just goes like a pile driver. He's gone. It'll be a five-minute penalty, a major on Yager for the hit from behind into the boards, and he is out of the game with 12.27 left to go in the first period. Bassin, I'm amazed he's up as quickly as he is. He's a tough kid. He'll never get Bob Bassin to complain about anything. Here's a super slow look at it. A Bassin, real good job there. He lost the puck, but he decided to take the body on Larry Murphy. And here's he was, bending over, falling. And you can see that Yager didn't really try to hit him, but he didn't pull out in time. I don't even know if he could pull out in time. Listen to this. You know, Bastin looked like he was able to turn his head so that his shoulder took part of the, the blow. Back into the middle, tip to Naslin. Naslin moves in. Naslin tried to center, got it back himself. Score! Naslin swept at the puck as he was being knocked down. A power play goal, and it is a 3-1 Pittsburgh lead. Well, Curtis Joseph is angry about that one. The St. Louis skate, they could take away those assists, but that's what it is right now. Ooh, Chase puts a hit on, and he's going to pick a penalty up for that. Chase. And that's a cross-checking call, and now Basil McRae takes down Tockett after the whistle had blown. They look at each other. Yeah, Tockett kind of pulled it up on that one to try and draw another one, another one on the Blues, but Mark Fossett wasn't buying it. Basil's got a little bit of a black eye. No problem for Basil. Just another one. It's a great fight that he had. I didn't see it, but you did. Ty Domi. Domi got the first shots. Basil came back and, and really treated him pretty tough and ended up on top of the pile, as he likes to point out. Oh. Well, he said he hit him one that, that dazed him near the end of the fight. Well, there's the cross check. Ooh, baby. Yeah, that's pretty dangerous stuff, too, and that's what the NHL is trying to cut down on. I don't think it would have counted even had it gone in. He directed it with his skate. Curtis Joseph was there. Marty McSorley in a penalty coming up on McSorley as McRae got knocked down. Kelly Chase. And there's the whistle. It'll be on Pittsburgh. And having some words, Marty McSorley and Basil McRae. There go the gloves. McRae wants McSorley to drop them. And McSorley didn't. you got to remember, Grant Jennings has already gone out with a sprained knee. And if Marty McSorley goes for however long, another problem for Pittsburgh but he wouldn't have gotten the instigator on that one because McRae had already dropped the gloves and was nose to nose with McSorley saying come on let's go we talked about this before the game whether these two guys would go and we said it'd have to be a pretty good reason for both of them McRae is tough McSorley's bigger and just about as tough that was a good reason the tripping which was one of those knees extended and right. McRae really didn't like it Watch McRae, nice little dump pass to him here coming up the boards. Watch McSorley come across. McRae with a nice move to go inside and didn't really catch much of him, but enough to spin him around. And you know what? After the play went down to the other end, Kelly Chase was, was hurt. He got slashed on the elbow. So it's heating up, gang. It's heating up. Matching minors here to McSorley and McRae. So we'll have a four-on-four four situation. 